What like is Rhett this, Frank? Frank? What do you got on? These are Bob's Goglios. He's letting me use them. Look. Back to the future. Back to the future. That's right. We, we wear this when we fire up the time machine. <laughs> Hey Frank, where are we? What are we doing? Well, we're down here at Bob's in Kansas, down here at Crowley College. And uh, anyway, Bob's gonna set us up in here and, and we're gonna learn how to do uh, some basics of oxy cutting and stuff. We wanna concentrate on the basics. We wanna get, uh, get you familiarized with uh, torch and what all you need and how to cut. So you're going back to school. Going back to school, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've done this before, but I'm going to try really hard to, uh, I mean, I might learn something. You never know. I, I can learn something new every day, so we'll, we'll give her a shot. So, Frank, is this the piece you're cutting? This I think so. I are think you, so. Are you scared? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> first things first, is this full or empty? Well, we don't know. We don't know. I mean, you treat them just like firearms. <laughs> yeah. You treat them as all good to go. They're 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 full. So you keep a cap on them at all times, whether you're moving them or whatnot. That's the old time coarse thread there. You just don't want to go get the WD-40 and start shooting stuff around here. Pure oxygen and yeah. any hydrocarbon is not a cool thing. Yeah. So no oil. It is violent and complete combustion. Okay, does it matter which one we put on here first? No. No. It does. <laughs> so we'll go with the acetylene regulator, the left hand male. Let me get around here in the right angle here. So this is acetylene, and which one is this? This is oxygen, pure oxygen. oxygen. Acetylene, you know, we use that one piece tip, but when you go using uh, propane, natural gas, and propylene. You need to have that two-piece tip, and that's vitally important. Okay, what's this one here? We got right-hand thread, uh, female. So let me put this rascal on here and get him started. When I say seat, I like to get stuff up there and get it snugged up where it just seats. Uh, it's a good idea to inspect the seats on these. You, you know, you, if you drop them and they get ding, they're brass, so they're soft. You gotta be careful. Okay? Good idea to back these off where they don't have any pressure on them. Now this is a newer design, newer style. This comes up, this all the way out and it bumps, it stops. Oh yeah. But when you take the old time ones that have the, the T-screw in the regulator face, I think there's one underneath the table there. They take one of these old time guys right here. Well, what happens is a lot of people, they're under the misunderstanding that they're turning this to the right in order to turn it off, and that's incorrect. That's right, yeah. It's not turning it off, it's adding pressure. It's, it activates the diaphragm in here. The other thing that I've seen people do is they'll leave these on the cylinder and they'll just turn them off and they leave that, that diaphragm is in there actuated all the time. You need to relax it, really. Yeah. Uh, and so when you turn these off, if you back this screw out till it's loose, it's fine. Back it off to the left, it's just like that. You don't need to thread it all the way out. But Okay, now, uh, I said we could check the system by turning them on, see if we got any leaks anywhere. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? Well, I always like to make sure this is loose. Does it matter which one do, that we turn on first? No. I know, it does. But I always, you know, we'll come over here, we'll turn these on slow. You always want to get into the habit of turning the cylinders on slow, and I believe that's empty. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> uh, we'll see. Oxygen, any high pressure cylinder opens all the way, and you can feel it kind of bump, and then you turn it back. It's the needle valve. I'm going to add some pressure here. Uh, I'm going to go to 20 PSI. I don't need much more than that because, I mean, I, I know the charts and I know the optimum the cutting pressures and whatnot, and it's based on the, the tip size. Mm -hmm. Acetylene, I personally like to turn it on three quarters. I like one full turn. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn this till I get about six. So I'll go six and 20. 
that's the pressures that I want to use on the tip side that I have in there for cutting quarter inch material, mm -hmm. right? All right, I haven't even hooked the torch up to it, haven't done anything. I can check for leaks right now. Just a quick check. And it's quite simply just turn the cylinders off with this system pressured. I have six pounds. That's my tank pressure. The needles have not moved. Mm -hmm. That means it's not leaking. Yeah. If either one of those moves, then we've got a leak somewhere. Then you gotta go check it. Yeah. I'll turn the oxygen off and see if anything moves here and it does not. Uh, if I had a leak anywhere, uh, how are we gonna find the leaks? Well, we go get some soapy water. And the first place you wanna look is if you have any splices, like you've got a length of hose and you, do I have one on here? I can't remember if I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, that would be the first place. So I have hose splices here to lengthen out my hose. I would soak these down. I would come back up here and soak this connection right here coming off the regulator. And then I would soak this right here. And the very last place, and I have seen it a couple of times, is right up here on top of the valve. If I find a leak right here, I, get, I just shut everything off, take the regulator off, mark that cylinder and get it out of here because what do you got? You got oxygen in here and you, that you can't see it, you can't smell it. It is violent, complete combustion. And under certain circumstances, you got pure oxygen. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, tell me about them, them in there? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, hand me my torch over there, old buddy. I use these quick disconnects for the simple fact that it's kind of a, I can take everything apart and lock these up. It might keep the weekend warriors out of here. <laughs> You know, but this is a quick disconnect system. I cannot put the oxygen onto the acetylene. It, it just won't work, okay? Can't do it. But I, I push these on here and they, they're on. I mean, they don't come off. But when I get done of an afternoon, evening, whenever, uh, I can push forward and pull this back. Push forward, pull this back. I can take this and secure it somewhere, take it apart. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I can, I can go places with it. And then I can roll these up. It keeps my rig cleaner, neater. And those are, those are special connectors. Those aren't just regular old quick necks. <laughs> well. Like on uh, air the, compressors, just for the guys that are watching that are asking. <laughs> uh, oh, no, these are, these are. are uh, made for oxygen. Right. All right, before we get started, let's take the torch apart and I'll explain some seats real quick. Cool. Here's how you take care of a torch. Uh, you always, always want to keep your tip clean. I am amazed at how many people use this as a hammer. <laughs> I don't, you get your laughing out of the way. You yeah, think it's no, funny. I, 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 you know, I, you've seen it. I know you've seen yeah. it. I used to do a lot of contracting and when I, when I started, I, I, went and, I went and bought two sets of tips. For my, this is a bigger size. I had the journeyman. This is a super range size. But I bought two sets of tips from Triple Lot through number three, and then I had a couple of specialty bent tips, uh, the Rivet Buster, the Scarfer, you know, and I had those around. In 12 years, I'm still on the first set of tips because the only way I would tear one up is to accidentally let it roll off the table or something and it fell and hit the seat and I'll show you the seat this right here is the only nut that you want to put a wrench on you don't want to put a wrench on this one here's hand tied only mm -hmm. seriously uh, but here's what I see a lot of people do now I'm gonna take this off see it wasn't that tight it was just seated and sometimes these will get stuck you know when they're hot and, they, and you take it a lot let it cool uh, if you tap on this gently but I like to do it over a table just in case. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. There we go. Uh, we've got machine seats up in here. This oxygen jet needs to be concentrated in the center of these preheat holes. If it isn't, you get turbulence. Hmm. 
turbulence sends you to the grinder because you've got hard slag on your on your cut yeah because it uh, what's what's cool is to have your oxygen jet at length out here mm -hmm. you can see it and you can hear it anyway uh the machine seats around here are what get dinged if that rolls off the table and it dings that little rascal right there i don't have a tool for that right i have a i have a, a mill file that i might be able to dress that up if i'm careful uh, when it's on the torch, I'll, I'll turn just a little bit of oxygen on, mm -hmm. and I'll, if it's a lot of cleaning, I'll run it across the mill file, I'll get a piece of 120 sandpaper mm -hmm. and make sure it's on there, and then just lightly drag it back and forth. And then the last thing we're doing is we're going we're gonna to clean this. And to take care of the orifices in your, the preheat holes are the smallest ones. And so, you know, they make these in these little short ones. They make them in the big long ones. Mm -hmm. Man, the big long ones and I don't get along because they're <laughs> so easy to break. These little fine wires, I mean, look at that. And if yeah. you get it bound up in there and you snap a wire off inside your preheat orifice, how are you going to get it out? Uh, and so you, you just, know which one you're using there based on, uh, the, you feet. know, the tip size? Feel. feel. I like okay. to run a wire in here where I can feel just a little bit of resistance. Mm -hmm. It's when it gets bound up and you push on it too hard, that's when it folds over and you just snapped it off. It takes, gotcha. a, takes a millisecond in time and you can't get that back and it's like one of those, oh, darn moments, you know? Darn, yeah. I don't spend, you know, I, you'll know when you get one that's clogged up, it gets short and it's whistling and whatnot. The one that I really care about See, I can, I can feel just a little bit of resistance. Mm -hmm. But what I'm not doing is wallering out yeah. a, an egg-shaped hole. I want the hole to be round, and I want it to be pointed in the center of that. Okay? That's how you take care of a tip make it last. Mm -hmm. I'll set this on here, and I'll give it about a quarter of a turn so that I know that that seat is sitting down in there. Uh, I'll hand tighten that, and then I'll reach for my crescent and I just put the pressure on it I can feel it okay that should be enough this by the way this is a double ought tip mm -hmm. here's what happens how many times you've been cutting along and all of a sudden you hear this uh, pop yeah. and you hear a little fart sound or whatever and you got some blue flame coming out around the threads mm -hmm. yeah so you got a leak and the leak is in the seat mm -hmm. okay what's the first thing you want to do grab a wrench and tighten it some more and that's that may not be the that may not be the the that may not be the remedy no i loosen them and twist down hey, number one i'd take it apart and look at it. i want to see how bad it is sure. it's something um, anyway I, you know you something. can you can tweak it a little bit more but over tightening is not going to do it it's yeah. just not going to it's not going to solve the problem and then the other thing you want to be careful of is this Especially when you're taking them apart, you don't want to drop this rascal. But you have two O-rings up in here that make a seat. Well, O-rings can get dry rotted. So you want to take an inspection on that. Okay. And, and that's why I don't like putting a wrench on this. Ever. Hand tight is plenty good enough. You're going to collapse those O-rings and then they're not going to be worth a hoot. Uh, I'll run this down here to about where it touches. And then I'll turn, I like my valves on the bottom side. I just, mm -hmm. something about it being up here. And I know people have put them out to the sides, wherever you're comfortable, but I, I'll get in here and I'll twist this thing, give it a, a good turn where it's about there. And then I'll hand tighten it. And I should be good enough. Yep.